Hello, welcome back. Right, as you can see, the um, topic of this video is just going to be like a discussion topic. Um, no sort of gameplay. Um, it's uh, our microcomputers from uh, back in the day, ugly. Um, these machines that we sort of cherish and love and love to play on still, um, where they work. <laughs> Um, and it all, the, the topic all arose from a conversation I had uh, at work with a younger colleague, much younger colleague, um, during a smoke break. We were talking about hobbies and stuff. And he asked, you know, what uh, particular ones I had. And I said I like to sort of collect and play games on old computers that were popular when I was a kid. Um, I'm not massively interested in the sort of PlayStation 4, Xbox One uh, type stuff. And he was really sort of interested. Um, he'd only sort of like vaguely heard of things like the ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64, had never heard of the Amstrad or BBC Micro. Um, and when I showed him sort of pictures of the collection, more or less as it is laid out here, this is all I have. Um, as you, I've said before, I'm just stuck in this little sort of corner of my uh, my living room. And he made a comment about um, how they looked uh, a bit ugly. Now he didn't say it nastily or anything, he was just like quite sort of surprised and how sort of big and chunky a lot of these things are and that sort of got me thinking you know um are they ugly nowadays i personally don't think they are um but i'm after your sort of views um on the topic i think they're all sort of like wonderfully evocative designs of uh, uh you know of the time that they're from um for me everything started with the zx81 which i got in 1983 when the spectrum was already out um thanks dad uh, but around that time, there were already uh, machines like the uh, Commodore VIC-20, and um, it's completely gone out of my head. Uh, what else was um, available at the time? BBC Micro is from 1981. And I can remember still um, going along to uh, shops and stores in the high street and stuff like that, mostly down in Folkestone, because we used to holiday down in Kent quite a lot. Um, and I would go into places like Debenhams, WH Smith's Boots, and whereas nowadays you only really have PC, um, PS4, Xbox, Switch um, dominating sort of like store layouts, way back in the sort of early to mid 80s, uh, late 80s as well, there was a real um, choice of machines that you could choose from and a huge array in all these shops. And I used to love sort of spending as much time as I could in there. Um, you would have things like the ZX Spectrum. Um, you know how sort of iconically um sort of how iconic is that from the time it's just a brilliant piece of design now if you can imagine this the spectrum in a store um lined up amongst all the other sort of computers many of which were much much bigger i mean look how that sort of compares in size to the bbc micro it's um it dwarfs it um the fact that um this was a much more uh affordable machine um, and it had loads and loads and loads and loads of games many of which were fantastic some total dross as well um, meant that this sort of sold really well it was significantly cheaper than all the others but you had things as well like the um, you had the Atari computers the Atari 8-bit computers you had the Dragon 32 you had the Oryx uh, Oryx 1 and Oryx Atmos um, you had did I say Dragon? Yeah, I did say Dragon. You had the Commodore 64, the Amstrad, um, BBC Micro to an extent, Acorn Electron, um, the cut down sort of BBC Micro. All these wonderful, wonderful um, sort of rafts of machines, together with all their sort of sounds coming out of them, etc. Now, um, one of the places that I used to go where I grew up in North London was an old department store called um, Jones Brothers. It's not there, well, it's there, but it's been a waitrose for many 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 years now but um that, uh, uh, jones brothers used to be a, a sort of huge huge department store and that had a computer um section down in the in the basement and you could go in there and just sort of hang around and you could ask the sort of um the store assistants etc if you could play um some of the games and more often than not they'd load up a game for you um and you just play it for half an hour etc you make you wouldn't buy it and then you just, just walk off out really used to wind them up but they still did it but the boots and wh smiths and that they uh, would never sort of do that but just sort of going in the, those are my memories just going into the store seeing all these banks of wonderful looking computers 
and the graphics, the sounds, um, the things that made them all different from each other. It's just really, really wonderful memories. I mean, here we have, obviously, the Amstrad CPC 464. Now, of course, it's not the whole unit. Um, the whole unit, of course, came with either a green, green screen monitor or a color monitor. Um, and the power supply was included, uh, was part of the monitor. So you had to have a monitor back in the day to be able to play on the Amstrad. Nowadays, there are modern um, PSU solutions, etc., so that you can use the 464 on a modern TV. But just seeing those lined up um, was absolutely sort of fantastic. Now, we're talking about sort of iconic designs. Now, various um, machines, I'm not sure if the Amstrad's ever got um, revisioned. Um, I don't know an awful lot about the Amstrad's. I'm, I'm still sort of like discovering those. Um, but for example, the ZX Spectrum went through um, many um, iterations in its lifetime. So we went from the, um, like I say, the, the, the iconic design of the Spectrum, very, very small, etc. the rubber keyboard that many people love, many people loathe, to um, the Spectrum Plus, which was um, a Spectrum, uh, exactly the same bits and pieces, but with, you can see a professional keyboard, which is, um, yeah, it, it's all right. Um, the computer itself looks really nice, I think. Um, it added a reset uh, switch, which was missing from the original. And you had some legs to stand it on so that you could do typey things if uh, if that was your bag. Um, but yeah, and then when uh, the 128K Spectrum, uh, the Toast Rack, the, uh, the last of the sort of Sinclair Spectrums, if you like, before Amstrad brought them out, uh, came out, it was basically uh, an expanded version of this case. It looks absolutely fantastic. It had 128K written down there and sort of... Uh, the, the heat fins on the side of it, which gave it the toast rack sort of nickname. And it looks like a, an absolutely brilliant machine. And then of course, Amstrad bought um, Sinclair out. And the first one, they, uh, sorry, the first um, computer they released was the gray ZX Spectrum Plus 2. Now this is my original ZX Spectrum Plus 2 from Christmas 1986, which um, I played to death more or less. It doesn't work now. Um, there was a problem with the uh, with the power outlet um, in that it became twitchy and any kind of movement of the PSU or lead in any way, shape or form would just cause the computer to crash. Um, I know there are people out there that can fix these for me. I will get around to it um, eventually. But yeah, um, that to me, I've got an awful lot of play and usage out of it. It doesn't look as iconic to me as the Sinclair machines, but it was still a really good machine. It looked a lot more professional. When you saw it in a shop, um, it looked an awful lot more professional. And it was followed with the 128 plus 2A and the plus 2B, which I think looked really nice. Uh, got dog air on it. Um, and this, is, this one's the same as that. It's gone the same way as that. I've got to send it off to get repaired. I really love the way the black case looks. Um, even today, I think it's still... A, really nice looking machine and again one that I sort of um, said that I uh, like to use I do have a I think that's an A in the action pack there but I can't be asked fannying around um, getting it out the box because there's a light gun and everything in there um, holding it in now of course the Commodore 64 went through various revisions and its most iconic um, appearance is the, the which is one that I sort of want for the collection as well is the bread bin style, the beige with the brown keys, etc., which was kind of like a different coloured Vic 20 case. I've always thought that looked really great, um, even to this day, again. But again, um, having sort of conversations with various people, it's like, oh my God, look at that. But it's, again, it's iconic of its time. And I don't think it is nostalgia bias, um, sort of making us think these things look prettier or making me think these things look prettier than they actually do. I think they are really, really great looking machines. Now, um, the bread bin sort of design um, featured in a few of Commodore's um, computers. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I know hardly anything about the um, Commodore 64. I'm fairly new to that as I am the Amstrad. Um, 
but the bread bin design was um, used for the Vic 20, which was white with um, black keys or dark brown keys, the Commodore 64, which was beige, um, and the Commodore 16, which was kind of like a dark um, charcoal gray with gray keys, which to me is the best looking of the, uh, the three um, bread bin styles. I've, I've always really liked the way the Commodore 16 looked. Haven't managed to get hold of one yet. I've got to be really careful about adding things to my collection now because as I get more and more enthused about things, I, I, I actually want to buy more and more because I think they look great. Um, but let's have a look. Um, the Commodore 64 obviously was revised to the Commodore 64C. Now this looks really nice too. I really like the way that looks. It's very professionally designed. It looks great on the desk. The keyboard is really easy to use. Um, and I don't think that looks dated at all. Um, you could say the data set that comes with it is the original sort of, or the one that's come with this one um, that I've got is like the original uh, Commodore 64 data set. And I can't remember what, um, what it's called. Mm, never mind. Um, but I use SD to IEC and the flash card and SD cards to load games through this anyway. But again, I think that stands up really really well today. Um, I don't think it's ugly at all. Um, but again, ah, nearly knocked me Diet Coke over. That could have been tragic. And then we go, um, you know, one that I do think is a, a bit ugly, but um, actually I like the look of it. I like the way it looks. Is the Commodore Plus 4. Now this one's a bit beaten up and tatty. Um, I got it for a few quid just a few months ago. But again, I think that's got a kind of wonderful sort of industrial sort of um, look about it. I love the sort of colour scheme, apart from the yellow keys. You'll have to excuse those. I love the sort of chunkiness of it, the um, the sort of sharp edges on the on the, the top of the fans. I think that would have st stood out really well. And a lot of people think this is not a very good looking computer. But you know what? I've, like I said, I've always liked it. It was a monumental failure. But I... I like it. And then I've got the um, the BBC Micro. Now this is a thing that, you know, if you if you dropped it, you'd smash floorboards. Um, but just look at the chunkiness of that thing. Um, but everything about the BBC Micro is great. It looks great. It's from 1981, so it's 37, nearly 38 years old. Um, if you want to see, I'm sure you've all seen the Micro Men documentary. If you want to see um, a docudrama about the sort of genesis of the BBC Micro, then please check out the Micro Men documentary. I will put a link, uh, sorry, docudrama, I will put a link uh, in the, the description box below because it's fascinating how this thing came about. And um, literally a week before they had to um, finalise their design and present it to the BBC as their entry into the um, computers project thing. This thing didn't exist, so they came up with it um, really quickly. And <coughs> everything about it is just great. It's got that kind of wonderful sort of heft about it. Um, a bit like the... I've never seen a Dragon 32 in real life. I don't think... Well, apart from in shops and stuff, but I've never sort of uh, felt one, etc. Um, so I can't really say... They, they seem to be similar in size. But I, I don't know what they're sort of like... Um, weight wise whether or not they're similar or different but you know I mean uh, this is by no means um, all of the collection so it's all of my collection but it's by no means a snapshot of everything that was available back in the day um, t absolutely tons of stuff um, Texas Instruments computers Tandys where, where, I'm not sure if they were sold in the UK MSX's Atari's Oryx like I say um, and some people were lucky enough to have really good um, collections of some of these machines. And, you know, uh, channels like the Retro Shed, etc. Um, go and check uh, them out because that is a, a fantastic channel. Again, uh, link below. I've got an awful lot more than I have. Um, but they're not ugly. I don't think they're ugly. I think they are absolutely fantastic, wonderful looking machines. Um, they all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses. And, you know, it came to a point earlier this year where I was fortunate enough to come into a little bit of money and was able to add some things to this collection. Um, I forgot with the Spectrum about the Spectrum Plus 3. Um, 
which seemed to have been the sort of last uh, in the line of Amstrad um, Sinclair Spectrums, the one with the disc drive. Never seen one, never owned one. Uh, obviously, I know what they look like, and I don't think I've ever played on one. Well, I haven't played on one because I haven't seen one in the, in real life. But yeah, that was um, the topic, um, the sort of discussion that we had, you know, um, about the way these things look. Now, I don't think they're ugly. If they are ugly, they're wonderfully ugly. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm interested in your thoughts and, dis and um, opinions on that. What you think, whether or not I'm right or wrong. What your favourite looking machine was from back in the day. Um, which of those, if any, you do think are um, unsightly on the eye. But uh, there we go. That was just a, a sort of discussion. Something that I'd been meaning to sort of bring up um, before. I did want to sort of do a live stream about it um, a couple of weeks ago. But the best laid plans of mice and men... Um, Often my itinerary is decided for me by other people and, you know, with the best laid plans of my and men, um, I wasn't able to do it. But it was a topic that I did want to cover um, because it sort of interested me. And if you look around, um, like I said, there's like PlayStation 4s and Xboxes, and Nintendo Switches, and none of which really do anything for me. Um, I go into a game shop nowadays and, you know, I can spend sort of half an hour trying to look around for something that really sort of takes my fancy. Um, and it is completely different to how I remember um, computer and game shopping back in the day. I used to be sort of like a giddy schoolboy going down to um, the shops, etc., just to be able to play on the, um, the machines or mess about them. I actually got thrown out of WH Smith's in Folkestone for typing rude words um, on the spectrum, uh, 20 go to 10 and run. And I got caught by um, the bloke who promptly threw me out. And when I met up with my mum sort of five or 10 minutes later, she's like, right, we're just uh, about ready to go back. I just got to pop into WH Smith's first, come on. And I'm like, no, no, I don't want to go in there. She's like, why not? I said, I don't want to, I'll wait for you outside. And to this day, she doesn't know. Hmm. We all did that though, didn't we? We all went in there and we all typed uh, rude words. There was some kind of poke or something you could type in as well, wasn't there, on, on Spectrums, where you could make it look like the machine had crashed or, or something like that? I don't know, but uh, it was all good fun. And you don't get that anymore. You don't get people going into it, well, pro purely because you can't, you know. You can't go in PC world and mess about on the computers because within 30 seconds, there's some bod standing next to you trying to flog you something. Anyway... Um, I don't know how long this has gone on for. I do apologise if you found the subject boring, but it was a topic that um, interested me, like I said. And I am uh, massively interested in, in what your opinions are on the subject. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please let me know. If you wish to subscribe, please do so. But if you do subscribe, please, please, please take the time to join in with the conversation and the discussion, because that's what it's all about. Thank you. Goodbye.